this being February the 14th, I wish all of you, and particularly our ladies, a happy Valentine's Day. And hopefully everybody in the male gender has looked after that. I'll know if anybody's running out quickly. <laughs> welcome to Trinity Church, St. John New Brunswick, and we welcome those that will join us later on social media. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Our opening hymn that Emily will lead is 401 verses 1, 2, and 4, Immortal, Invisible God.
First reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of their prophets who were in Bethel came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here. For the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here. For the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord lives and as you live yourself, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing yet. If you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. The word of the Lord. Our song today is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. And I'll read it through for us. The Lord, even the most mighty God, hath spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shineth forth. Our God cometh and keepeth not silence. There goeth before him a consuming fire, and a mighty tempest is stirred up around about him. He calleth to the heavens from above, and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me with sacrifice, and the heavens declared his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Our epistle is taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at the third verse. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In, case, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God 
in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Emily will lead us in the first verse of hymn 235, Lord enthroned in heavenly splendor. St. Mark's ninth chapter, beginning at the second verse. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain part by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. There appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they, they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, 
kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I am blessed. one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be totally acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Well, we woke up this morning, February the 14th, a uh, very well-known day thanks to the greeting card in the flower shops and the chocolate manufacturers. It is Valentine's Day. But we also woke up this morning recognizing this is the last Sunday after Epiphany. And we may also have woke up this morning thinking this was that mysterious account where Jesus and his three disciples went up the mountainside and Jesus was transfigured before them. I know you're waiting for me to speak on Valentine's Day, but that's not going to happen. I figure you, if you haven't looked after it by now, it's too late. I can't give you a heads up on that one. But if you do read on your own, you'll find out the history of Valentine's Day beyond the chocolate manufacturers and the florists and the greeting card companies. This morning is the last Sunday after Epiphany. And I think it's worthy of us just to take a couple of minutes and reflect on what is an Epiphany. Well, I can tell you, during my years of discernment in Winnipeg, I heard this word far too often because I kept being asked what was the epiphany that caused me to want to seek out ordination. I came up blank on all three discernment discussions on that which prolonged my journey to the National Church for sure. All I could come up with was I was raised in a Christian home I was brought up in the church, and when I became old enough, I looked after that myself and remained in the church. Unlike some of the others that had a questionable journey, they saw an epiphany and landed in front of them wanting ordination. Our faith as Christians, epiphany refers to the revelation of God incarnated in Jesus Christ. It's true that in our secular world we use that word epiphany as a monumental change because the fundamental epiphany was the most monumental change that ever, ever happened and will ever happen. God incarnate as Jesus Christ. This past week the Archbishop had an open forum on Zoom with his clergy. Thursday evening, I guess it was. And in that conversation, it, just, it was all questions to the Archbishop, and he's talking about the church in this pandemic. But one of the things that hit me was, he talked about the risk God took at the Epiphany. The risk he took to incarnate himself in Jesus Christ. In trusting that Jesus' life on this earth would yield and establish his church forever. And then Jesus, through his works, entrusted some of the most unlikely characters, as we know as disciples, to carry that on. So through these past five weeks, I know you're all thinking about the messages we had, we talked about the baptism of the Lord. We talked about 
coming and seeing the power of Jesus and then taking that outwards and going and telling about it. We talked about the early stages of Jesus choosing his disciples, his friends, and what friendship meant. And last week we talked about the authority and what that means to us today, realizing we come here today because we respect the authority of the church. We respect the authority of God. And we come here regularly because of that. So he chooses, Jesus chooses three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to go up the mountainside with him. We're not given much of any pre-planning why these three and not a fourth or not three others. But something mysteriously happens when they reach the top of the mountain. Their friend, the disciples' friend Jesus, their companion, changes in front of them. The appearance of Jesus' face changed. His clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. But what to me stands out is God's word at the end. This is my son whom I love. With him I'm a well pleased. Listen to him. Out of all that amazing experience, I land on those words. So now, think for a moment, you've just seen Jesus all bright white, Elijah and Moses, you hear God talking to Jesus, you hear Elijah and Moses talking to Jesus, and now you're on your way back down from the mountain. I can only imagine it was pretty much silent for quite a while, trying to discern what this all meant, what they seen. They seen something that no one else would ever see. And I would expect Jesus himself is trying to put some sense to it, because he went up the mountain for a very particular reason, which I'll get to in a minute. Jesus is trying to put his next days in order. And now he's been confirmed and affirmed that his path to Jerusalem is right on track. And then Jesus breaks the silence between him and the three disciples. Tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. There's a number of things that are wrapped up here in affirmations in this short little gospel. The most important is Jesus was affirmed that it was his time to head to Jerusalem. He knew what he was walking into because he had already foretold the disciples that he would be put in the hands of those that would harm him and he would die. They did not understand that. He got his approval from Moses and Elijah and he got it from God. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. But there's other affirmations that have happened here. The three disciples, Peter, James, and John, they just heard from God himself that their companion was indeed God's son. As I said, they were distressed from Jesus saying back earlier in gospel where he was teaching them that the man, Son of Man must suffer things and be rejected by elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. They had no way to put that in context. The reality here of why Jesus most likely said, say nothing to no one till the Son of Man rises, is it will only be then that their eyes will be truly opened enough to understand. They did not understand the fullness of Jesus, the Messiah. And he's saying it will be revealed to you at a later time. Now, how true is that for us? We go through life, we go through experiences over maybe the last months or weeks or even a few days. 
but it's when a certain event happens in our life that we can clearly look back and see the events that have taken place in the last few weeks or months or whatever and say, that makes sense now. What I heard, what I saw, makes sense to what just happened. Not indifferent from the learnings we're getting from Jesus and the gospel. Because as we're going through life, we're not always equipped to understand the why. But an event might happen that will clear that up for us down the road. The message for us this morning in this biblical mystery is Jesus' transformation. Is we should be reminded that no matter how high the mountaintop is that we will arise to, there will be the time when we have to come down off that mountain and rejoin everyday life. But we will do that each time being changed. I often say this, there's no way possible for a person to come into this space in the presence of the Holy Spirit and walk out exactly the same as they walked in. Everyone will be changed some way. That is a Christian on the trajectory of change of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we appear before you in the midst of the mystery of the transfiguration of our Lord on this Sunday as one of your disciples, amazed at your glory, which you showed to Peter, James, and John on that mountaintop. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit that each and every one of us can leave this sacred space and be more alive and living in your likeness. Amen. Let your light show shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The offertory hymn is in your big blue book, 460. Lord, the light of your love, shine, Jesus, shine.
Blessed be thy Lord God of Israel forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations into the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessing of freedom and peace. I grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to thy servant David our Bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, remembering those on our prayer list and those on our hearts, we raise up to you, Lord. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants that departed this life in faith and fear, and this morning we remember Sheldon Genton. Rest eternal grant unto Sheldon, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship we may follow their good example and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth, in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickednesses, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, we do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them, that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your 
gifts of God to the people of God.
us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual fruit of thy most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our baptist duty and service, not laying our marriage, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end.
come and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.